Hi there, and welcome to our latest edition of Money Talks, where we take a look at all aspects of the rural economy as it affects you in the ag sector. Today, a rare insight into the world of Alan Hubbard through the eyes of a man who's come to know him well, South Canterbury Finance CEO Sandy Mayer. He's in our studios to talk about the serious fraud office investigation into the holdings of the South Island's richest man and to tell us the latest on what's going on with another Hubbard institution, South Canterbury Finance. Also in the South Island, they're celebrating at Sinlay as one of China's biggest dairy companies pumps in millions of dollars in a dairy plant processing partnership. What will it mean for New Zealand dairy farmers and Fonterra? And with rural farm prices falling and white-collar crime climbing, where's the New Zealand economy heading? All this and much, much more coming up. But first up, the New Zealand dollar. It's weakened against the U.S. dollar over the past few days, mainly based on a slight change of heart by the global market and caution from traders regarding the outlook for official cash rate increases. Joining us is ASB's rural economist James Shortle. James, what's the latest with our dollar now? Last week we saw the dollar was, uh, was weakening against the US and that was mainly due to the uh, softer inflation numbers that we saw and that's, that has meant that traders have uh, been questioning how many official cash rate rises the Reserve Bank are going to need to do and, uh, and that was really the biggest driver why we saw the dollar weaken but um, just overnight then we've, we keep on get, getting driven by international markets and the US, uh, US equity markets were higher and that has seen the New Zealand dollar creep up. We're currently trading about 71.40 against the US. Now, the next official cash rate uh, increase, of course, which I'm picking, is going to be next Thursday. What are you picking? Yeah, we're picking an increase. Uh, we're, you know, the, the inflation numbers last week were so, a bit softer than uh, many were expecting, but really with all the, uh, the government-related um, increases that we have been seeing over the past few months, we've got uh, the emissions trading scheme, GST increases on the, on the horizon, then um, the, the Reserve Bank's got to keep inflation between 1% and 3%, and we're picking that it's going to get above the 3% level next year, and that, that means that they're going to have to start increasing uh, and continue increasing the official cash rate right through this year. So we're picking... 25 points um, at each of the meetings through this through 2010. Okay, moving over to Europe, we see that Ireland, uh, its banks have passed its stress test, and yet Moody has downgraded their credit rating. How is that going to affect uh, how we play against the pound and the euro? Well, against uh, the, the, the European stress, uh, bank stress test results are due out on Friday of this week, and that's going to be quite a big, um, uh, a big uh, news item for international financial markets, to be honest. Um, 91 you know, banks under the gun. That's right, and, and I think it's been, uh, it's been taken as from the, uh, from the European Commission that um, they, they really want to settle financial markets down and, and um, you know, settle the traders down, and, and so it's going to be quite, it's going to be quite key. Um, to be honest, over the, overnight then we've, we've traded higher against the pound, um, the UK budget budget for June was, uh, was, was worse than many were expecting, so we're, we're higher against the pound, we're sitting sort of close, close to 47p. Um, against the euro then there's a few issues coming out of Hungary and um, that has meant that the, that the, uh, the European uh, economies are uh, looking a bit touchy and uh, we're trading it higher against the euro also. Speaking of Hungary, uh, they're in big trouble. International Monetary Fund says you're not getting any more money till you deal to your budgets. Right, can we expect to see this with other countries? Potentially, if they don't play ball, um, you know the IMF are, um, are putting the hard line down on Hungary. But you know, realistically, they uh, the Hungary's in, in when, when reading between the lines, and they've still got plenty of money coming through between now and October. The, the crunch doesn't come on till that point in time, and I would expect that uh, there'll be plenty of negotiating between now and then. So it might be a bit of a more of a storm and storm in a teacup. We're doing well with our trading partners, aren't we? A lot of that's coming from strong growth in Asia. I see Singapore growth is up 26%. Yeah, Singapore, when you, when you look at, all the talk has been about China recently, and uh, Singapore come and bring out numbers last week. Um, you know, that's, that it was even stronger than China, probably the strongest in the, in, in the world. Um, and, you know, I, I guess it's a, quite a good barometer for us um, in terms of what's happening in the Asian economy. They're a big uh, importer, exporter of commodities. Um, when they're going, going very well, then that means it's good for us because, uh, of, of course, Asia is now very, very important to the New Zealand economy. And tell me now about the, uh, the different sectors. Let's talk about beef over in the U.S. What's happening with the prices there? Yeah, I mean, right through April, then we've seen U.S. beef prices uh, falling, and there's been a bit of scepticism about um, expecting too much out of that market. 
you know, US beef prices demand has been lower early in, in July than um, we weren't too, sh weren't too sure where things were going to go. But uh, it's interesting over the past week, uh, US importer prices and, and their domestic prices have all ticked up quite strongly and, and it does seem like supplies are limited. Um, that should be good news for us and there has been a bit of a change in that market. I'm not expecting to see too much um, back here for us in New Zealand just yet, but um, you know, there, there are at least some positives coming through that we may see develop in time. And apparently UK lamb consumption is down 20%. What's behind this? Well, when you, when you look at consumption, then you can only consume product when it's available. And uh, I'm a little bit sceptical about that number just because... Uh, How come? Tell me. Basically, I mean, if, there, if there's no product on the shelf, then you can't consume it. So I, I think uh, we have seen over the, over the past year or two that, uh, that, that lamb supplies globally have fallen dramatically. And, uh, and I think that has been the case. So uh, there's no doubt, I, I would assume, that um, consumption in the UK has fallen. But... 20% seems a big number. I think it's probably more driven by lower supply than a real fall off in demand. And yet the industry here tells us that, that here at home we're losing a lot of ewes every year to dairy conversion, basically. How bad is it getting? Yeah, I think, it's, uh, I think it's, it could have uh, long-term effects on the industry. Um, numbers are well back, and uh, when, you, when you're looking at um, dairy prices and, and payouts, then um, you know, that stacks up pretty well when you've got a farm that can be converted. Um, but you know, meat is our, uh, has been the mainstay of, of farming for, for quite a while. Um, dairy is taking that mantle recently, but um, you know, it could have, have some longer-term effects for sure. And in 30 seconds or less, how's dairy tracking? Well, there hasn't been a lot of movement in dairy recently. Um, it's interesting to note that out of the U.S., dairy production has increased through through June by 2.4 percent. So that's that's quite a big number. And we've heard all this talk about um, herd retirement schemes in the U.S. 35,000 cows culled, all that sort of thing. But um, seems like there's a, a lot of cows coming through the back door, and and their production has increased. You know, it's still early times for um, for the season. We're we're still picking that a, a payout in the late seven dollar range, pretty close to where Fonterra are forecasting at the moment. Okay, good to know. Thank you very much. James. Next up is the CEO of South Canterbury Finance, Sandy Mayer, who joins us to talk money globally and here at home. Stay with us. Welcome back to Money Talks. Listening from the sidelines, Sandy Mayer, CEO of South Canterbury Finance and a native New Yorker. In the late 80s, Sandy came here as CEO of Citibank Citicorp. And then the government appointed him as statutory manager for DFC New Zealand to manage the insolvency of the $2.2 billion finance group. He did such a great job, they gave him a medal for services to New Zealand. Sandy, thanks for being with us. Thank you. We want to talk, of course, uh, to you. You have been a statutory manager yourself. Many say one of the most experienced in the country. What do you make of the Alan Hubbard investigation by the SFO? Well, it's quite an exceptional uh, set of circumstances. Alan is uh, usually described as an iconic figure. He's been in business 60 years in Timaru. Um, he has quite complicated affairs. He's a director of almost 200 corporations. So the idea of appointing a statutory manager to delve into all of those affairs and untangle them is quite a remarkable, ambitious program. How rare is it to put individuals into statutory management, not just as company? Well, statutory management itself is very rare. Uh, the subset of statutory managers over individuals is even rarer. I think it's happened once before in New Zealand economic history. Is this something that could have been dealt with under the Securities Act? Because apparently it all came about because of one complaint by one investor that he or she didn't have a prospectus, and yet they still invested. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to tell because we don't know what information they have and what they're uh, in pursuit of. So they've chosen the tool to fit what they think is the job. But I think most outsiders feel that there would have been a range of less draconian measures. Uh, what's been announced so far amounts to investigation, reconciliation, uh, and there would be various regimes to do that. And probably Alan himself uh, probably could have assisted to a great extent.